Hello, hello, health coaches. So I am kind of taking you guys on the road with me a little bit. Um, since dropping my son off at camp, I went and um, spent some time with my best friend who lives over here in East Tennessee. I live in Chattanooga, and um, the state of Tennessee, as you guys know, if you know anything about geography, is very long. And so my trip took me to North Carolina, and then and I've circled back around to some old stomping grounds. Um, and, you know... M an old life actually just kind of revisiting some things um spent a great evening with my with my best friend as i said last night came down the mountain and went by the one of the lakes i used to spend some time on and right now i'm gonna i'm sitting in a parking lot and i'm gonna tell you just a moment where i'm at um a parking lot that i pulled into over and over and over again um many many years ago in the 90s i spent a lot of time parked in this very spot right here and it was when I was a manager at the Outback Steakhouse. So I'm going to flip my camera around and give you guys kind of a look here. So that door right there is the door I used to, and this is where I used to park. Um, that's the door I used to walk into every single day. Um, when I was a manager of an Outback Steakhouse, I had um, a 70-hour work week. I was up until 5 or 6 o'clock in the morning. I was partying. I was smoking two packs of cigarettes a day. Um, now, again, this is back in the 90s. And, um, you know, I really wasn't taking good care of myself in any capacity at all. And I truly believe that that was the start of the demise of my health. Hi, Michelle. Um, I truly believe that the amount of physical, mental, and emotional stress that I put myself under from um, working in this location, this very location I'm sitting at right now, I can actually almost have the same type of feeling that I felt when I would pull in that, oh my God, I'm so tired. What am I doing here? Why am I working at this job that I, that I can't stand? Um, you know, it was destroying my health and I was destroying my body. And, you know, my mom raised me holistically and, um, and you, you say I'm amazing. Oh, you're amazing because I know all of the things that you've been through and all you've done with your life too, Michelle. We all have a journey and a story to share. And um, this being part of mine, but I can tell you that I was a standard American person. So for many years, I, you know, my mom raised me holistically. I had an amazing upbringing and when it came to healthy food and things like that. I mean, she, do, she did all of the traditional type of Weston A. Price types of things. Um, and I went off the rails when I got, when I got free, I went off to college and I, you know, I just didn't take good care of myself. And that expanded into my grown up life when I quit college um, and decided to just go full time into restaurant management. I got moved up here to this area. It's called Johnson City, Tennessee. And I just uh, continued to destroy my health and my life in so many ways. And I'll tell you this much the standard American lifestyle for me included terrible, uh, greasy, you know, foods that had no, no nutritional value. Um, two packs of Marble Light 100s every day, almost every day. Um, drinking till the sun came up with my employees and partying and, um, you know, just had a lot of very unhealthy practices. And why I'm sharing this with you guys is because there are so many coaches right now out there that are still working at jobs that are not, that are not feeding their soul. And one of the reasons I think that that's happening is out of fear, basically. A lot of it is out of fear, of course, necessity to bring in, um, you know, the money that we need to live. But I stayed at this job out of fear, 100% out of fear, because I was afraid to start over. And, and I was only in my 20s, so you can only imagine. But I was afraid to start over. And I, I didn't want to be, um, I didn't want to be somebody that depended on other people. And then... I don't know what happened and I can't explain it. All I can tell you is that no matter what you believe, the universe always has your back. God always watches over you. Whatever you believe will come to you when the time is right. And I remember literally going to bed at like four o'clock in the morning, one morning, I was exhausted and I sat up in my bed and I said, I'm quitting my job today. I don't know where it came from. I hadn't been thinking about it. I knew that I couldn't keep living that way, but I just didn't know how to get out of it and change my life. And so I believe, you know, divine intervention uh, took control of that for me. I sat up in my bed. I called my roommate in there and I said, I'm giving you my two months notice. Our lease is up and I need to, I need to go. I am slowly dying here. Um, and so I got the typewriter out and yes, you heard me right. I've told this story before where I got the typewriter out and I typed up my resignation and I drove straight over to this 
location right here that I'm talking to you from right now. And I turned in my notice. And um, I have to tell you that it felt so freeing, scary, um, and, and, and all of those things that come with leaving something that you know so well. And it's all I really knew. I'd been working in restaurants for years. Um, but I knew that it was killing me. It was killing my soul, my body, everything. And so, um, I have to say that if you are a person that is stuck in that kind of that same thing where you feel like, like it's just destroying you to be where you are, um, you know, there are some things that are going to happen. One, one thing's going to happen is that if you continue to stay there, you're not going to build that business that you love because you're focusing on something that doesn't feed you. Right. Um, the other thing that can happen is a health crisis can come in and take over for you, which is when I, when I moved away, I went down to my parents, um, house. I put everything I owned in storage. I had to move in with my parents at 20 something years old after I'd been on my own for years. And I started working with them in promotional advertising and, um, and you know, marketing and things like that. And I remember feeling, I got vertigo. I, I ended up with, um, tinnitus. I ended up, um, with muscle pain. I just, my body fell apart. It waited until I got into a, an environment that I could start to take better care of myself, but everything fell apart on me. I was literally living the standard American lifestyle, uh, before I got down there. And so I tell you this because I want you to, in, in, in the interest of transparency and knowing that, that I have not, I have, I went off the rails and, and took my health with me. And we are working with people that were just like me. We are working with people who are overworked. They're overstressed. They're unhappy. Um, and they just don't know how to get out of it. And thankfully for me, I took it, I took that wake up call and I changed my life and I quit smoking and I started exercising and I started eating differently. But all of the repercussions of my health and the accumulation of issues that I gave myself from a, you know, a, a terrible lifestyle, they followed me. For years, I couldn't figure out what was going on. And, uh, you know, my story about my health is another day. But um, for 10 years, I tried to figure out what is wrong with me? Why don't I feel good? Why does my body hurt? And you guys, if I had had a health coach that could have stepped in in that moment and seen everything that I was going through and what I'd been through and say to me, you know what happened is you you didn't take care of yourself. And this is what happened. You know, you, you taxed your endocrine system, your adrenal glands are here or there. I might have gotten healthier and um, better sooner, but I had to do it all by myself. So that came with a lot of uh, financial strain and a lot of strain on my marriage and a lot of strain on me physically and emotionally. So if you're out there thinking, first of all, that people don't need you, that they aren't, that uh, health coaching is, is not a valid profession or that you can't make money doing this or whatever, I want you to think about what it would be like if you were a person that, that couldn't find somebody to help you. And, and then I want you to remember that you are that person that can help people and they are looking for you. So... You know, I didn't even know what to call it back in, then when my life was falling apart and my body was falling apart. I had no idea that a health coach, if they even existed or whatever, all I know is I took the experience that I gathered in my journey um, through sickness and stress and figuring it out and I applied it to helping other people and I created my own business as a health coach by doing so. So, you know, the story has a couple of purposes. One, if you're stuck in a dead-end job that you hate, just know that something's going to come along and it's going to move your your position for you if you don't take control of that. It will happen because, uh, you know, whoever you believe in knows that you deserve to be happy and thriving in your profession. So that's one thing um, I want to share with you. Um, and then the other thing is that that, you know, you don't have to turn people away when they ask you for help. You can tell them, listen, I have an approach that is, I'm able to help anybody with any problem. And, um, let's go ahead and schedule a few minutes on the, on the phone. And let's see if this is something that's going to be a good match for us. You can even just start the process of getting your business where you want it to be by having conversations with people and letting them know that you have the knowledge and the skill to help them. Okay. So, Anyway, I was driving and I just passed this place and I turned back around and I wanted to park here because it came to me that it's so often we're afraid to share our journeys with people. We're afraid to tell people that we've not always been healthy or perfect. And in when reality, I say this all the time, people aren't looking to work with someone perfect. They're looking to work with someone who can help them. So if you've got a story similar to mine where you were slowly killing yourself with cigarettes and alcohol and bad food and, um, and a stressful job or whatever your story is, Make sure that you're sharing that with the people that, that, that you're looking to work with so they know that you've been through it or you are in it and that you're relatable. 
and that you can help them. So anyway, that's all I'm going to share with you today. I hope you guys are having an amazing day. Um, try to make sure that when, you know, when those people come to those free consultations that you're just practicing that active listening. And if you don't have a free consultation link or method of signing up with, um, with you right now, go ahead and create that today. So you can at least start getting on the phone with people and sharing your story and letting them know a little bit here and there, you know, about what you've been through and that you're relatable. Um, that's the most important part of working with people. They want to know that, that you understand where they are and that you have a story too, and that you've not always been this perfectly healthy person. Um, but that you're out there to help them and to guide them on their journey as well. All right, guys, have a great rest of the day. Back to the road.